Good morning to you all. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to Brussels for this, the Party of European Socialists Congress. Together, for the Europe we need. This is the theme of our Congress, a theme that reflects the principles of equality and solidarity that bind us together as a party and as a movement, and a theme that reflects our shared belief in the power of a social Europe to serve all of our citizens. We live, all of us, in extraordinary and turbulent times. Some of our countries, my own included, have lost their economic sovereignty in recent years. The damage, political, economic, and social, has been wrecked upon our countries has been very significant. The very social fabric of our societies has been strained, and Europe has not helped enough. Irish taxpayers have been forced to bear the weight of crush crushing debt bank alone. Bank debt that was partially caused by the failure of a centre-right government in Ireland to regulate our banks, but which was also caused by a European failure of banking regulation, which saw cheap money flow into Irish banks when times were good, and flow out just when the banks needed it most. This is a pattern which has been reflected across all of Europe. Destructive mismanagement of our banking sector, which our incoming governments have to attempt to clean up. Millions of young unemployed people in our countries have been left bereft of support, without the dignity of work, and without access to the education, training, or apprenticeships which would allow them to get back to work. But today, we stand united, and we declare that this is not enough of Europe. This is not our Europe. It is a Europe of the right that has chosen not to come to the help of those in need, whose only concern is to protect the interests of the markets. United, we stand today to declare that we believe in a tax on speculative financial transactions. We believe in a youth guarantee to ensure that our young people are given the support they need to escape the indignity of unemployment. And we believe in democratic accountability of our Europe. That is why we are the first party who will hold a Europe-wide process to select our candidate for the President of the European Commission, ensuring that our Commission is a figure chosen by our citizens and not behind closed doors. Friends, delegates, next June will mark the 40th time when I first, our 40th anniversary, when I contested my first election 40 years ago. Over those 40 years, Europe has changed our society beyond recognition beyond what we could have dreamed of, certainly what I, beyond what I dreamt was possible. First, Europe has brought peace to us all, an achievement we must never, never underestimate. Europe has been democratized. Europe has been reunited. Women are better paid and have had their workplace rights strengthened because of Europe. Gay people can live a, free, a life free from the fear of criminalization and discrimination because of Europe. The quality of our air and water has improved enormously because of Europe. Exploitation of people through excessive working hours is coming to an end because of Europe. All these changes and many, many more have been secured during my career in politics. And it is our social democratic Europe that achieved all these gains. Not a Europe focused on the markets, but a Europe focused on the complete lives of our people. Not a Europe that turns her back in countries in need, but a Europe that stands united in solidarity. The only political community in the entire world that other countries actually want to join. 
We have a queue of other sovereign states that want to come into Europe. Ask yourself why. No other political entity on this globe can actually declare such a reality. That is our Europe. The Europe we have gathered here today to advance. Today is a great opportunity for us to reflect upon our success in growing our project over the last 12 months. Over the last year, we have persuaded more and more Europeans to agree with our analysis. PS member parties have entered government in France, Denmark, Romania, Belgium, Croatia and Slovakia in the last year. In the last year. And we hope and expect, of course, that the Netherlands will join that list in the coming weeks. And of course, too, in Martin Schulz, we now have a socialist president of the European Parliament, and boy, don't they know it. Boy, don't they know it. Martin. All, comrades, all of these wins in the last 12 months. Yes, we have had setbacks also, but it clearly has been a good year for our family after many not so good years. And that good year has been achieved because of the combination of your work in each member state and our shared analysis of the problems which we face and that how we can genuinely change the world. We have more gains on the horizon. We are on the way back. In Germany, in Lithuania, and in Bulgaria, our member parties are performing very strongly in opposition, and I believe that they will re be returned to power in their upcoming elections. But we must look forward also towards 2014 to ensure that we increase the size of the S&D group in the parliament and to elect the first democratically nominated Socialist President of the European Commission. Last, late last year, our good friend Paul Nyrup Rasmussen stepped aside from his leadership of the PS. I was honoured to be asked to fill some of the enormous gap that Paul left behind. For seven years he led our family. With grace and with humour, he led us through some challenging times. I know you will join me in wishing Paul well in his continued recovery. Friends, I've been a member of the PS presidency for longer than I should mention, and it has been humbling for me to chair that group in recent months as we built the political programme that is presented for your discussion and approval this weekend. Today is the culmination of that honour for me. I must take a moment to thank the staff of the PES who have given me so much support in recent months and whose professionalism and passion is so evident in the Congress. And I must thank our Belgian hosts who have been so generous in supporting the Congress. And, bef <laughs> We've had an extraordinary year and we are looking forward to an even better year, taking us right up till June 2014. The enthusiasm of the activists, the resilience in coping with the logistical changes for the location of this Congress, and their generosity of spirit and enthusiasm marks us out from every other political movement in this European Union. We are the party of European socialists. We are a family, a friendship, an ideology, a culture, a community that stretches north and south, east and west, and that binds us, that binds us despite sometimes inability to communicate in tongue, but we can always communicate in heart. That is our movement. And today I want to pass the baton on to a generation that must continue that progress. Sergei Stanishev will be elected our president today. It has been a joy for me to work along Sergei, Sergei in recent months and to work with him and to look, working with him, look forward to working with him in the future. Can I thank you, delegates, and can I now call on Kaiser Penny to address you?
Thank you, Rory, and thank you, Sergei and PES, for giving me the opportunity to be part of the opening of the Congress. Dear Congress, dear Congress delegates and guests, dear comrades, one year ago, I was asked to co-chair the PES Working Group on Youth Unemployment, an issue that we in the Young Socialists have been working for num on for a number of years. I welcomed the work of this group greatly, but I must say that not without some caution. For too often, we have found that whilst there is a space on the issues, on the, for the issues of youth unemployment in the speeches and statements of the politicians, it has not fitted nearly so well into the agendas and actions of the European parties and institutions. Therefore, it was a great feeling to see that from the very beginning, it was clear to every member of this working group that not only are the consequences of Europe's youth unemployment catastrophic and pressing, but also that we all recognized that there is no simple or cheap solutions for this problem. The working group got behind the policy that young socialists have been advocating for a long time, the call for European youth guarantee, a demand which is so much in line with our socialist beliefs. Because we, so, we, the socialists, we believe in the right to work, right to welfare through work, and for the state to be the final guarantor of the welfare of its people. And this is what the Youth Guarantee is all about. So this year, we have all been working together as an entire movement, from young socialists and socialist women, to national parties, parliamentary groups in the national and European level, and to the Committee of Regions, in a joint campaign to make European Youth Guarantee a reality for every young person in Europe. And dear comrades, when we work together, we make things happen. The European Youth Guarantee is now firmly on the European agenda. It will be the priority for the Irish presidency, and I believe, I firmly believe, that not long from now, we can say that we did it. The socialist made European Youth Guarantee a reality. <laughs> but the Youth Guarantee only addresses a part of the problem that we have. Unemployment masks and unemployment statistics mask million, millions of silent tragedies in Europe both for individuals and for the societies. We are facing a generation of people, young people, who are losing more than just the income from a job. They are losing hope of a better future and a trust that the welfare state will help them back on their feet. And why are they losing this trust? It's because the other part of the legacy of this crisis has been to unveil the extent to which we have lost the democratic control over our economies, our financial markets, and through that, our societies. We on the left, as well as on the right, have trusted so much on the legitimizing power of the prosperity brought by the European project that we have often ignored the very apparent lack of democracy within our system. The lack of true democratic control over the financial sector, over national policy, and over European cooperation is both a cause and an effect of this crisis. And this, dear comrades, this is a great challenge for us, for the socialists. As we are looking for the solutions for this European crisis, here in this Congress and in the next 20 months to come before the European elections, we need to work together to strengthen the democracy in Europe, to give people power to say no to austerity only, the power to change their societies, and most crucially, the hope. The hope that even in the most desperate personal situations, they do have the power to change their destinies. This means re-regulation, taming of the financial markets, but also democratizing European institutions themselves. We have started this work with calling for a new, open way of selecting and electing the President of the European Sorry. Commission, but we need more than that. We need real structural changes to the way decisions are taken and how the elected European Parliament is included in this decision-making. 
We also need to rethink okay. and assess go our go own go. internal go. processes and continue to democratize our parties and organizations no, 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 as well as the institutions okay. that we work within. The process of renewal and democratization of PES right. is starting with the changes that this Congress is going to make to the statutes, but this can only be the beginning. We in ECOSI will continue to support this process towards an open and internally democratic party at the European level. Because, dear comrades, we are the movement that brought democracy to the people in Europe. We won the right to vote for women, for workers, for minorities and migrants. Together, I believe that we can once again find the solutions to help restore the fate of the people to the European project. By putting the people before the markets, by concentrating on the right to work, by giving people control over their own societies and destinies, we can answer not only to the questions posed by the times of crisis, but also to the questions about the future direction of Europe itself. Thank you.